Hello and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Uh, we're getting stuck straight into it today. Um, what I'm going to be looking at, as you just see here, I am cutting out a floor. Now this floor is going to be for the refreshments room. As you can see, the three chimneys have now been added. And I've also placed a little bit of card there with a hole in it. That's going to be for the LED, which will light up the barbers in there. And also, if I turn the building around, you can see just in there I divided the telecommunications room or the telephone room into two telephone rooms. Got one this side, one that side. And if I turn the building up this side, you can see, if you look closely, two doors going into either room or coming towards us. As you can see, and if I turn it over, you can see how I've done it. See, there is a little bit of a gentle curve in the building. And hopefully by putting this floor in, the curve will stay and hopefully it won't try and straighten up the building because that's the issue I've had all along with this building it wants to straighten itself up when I keep adding more card so we'll um, see what happens first thing I want to do is paint the floor I'm going to paint it in white satin and then when it dries I'm going to mark it with a pencil so it'll have white floor tiles and then we can um, move on from there. You see I've marked out for a counter here. Um, a serving counter. So I don't know if you'll be able to see that from the other window. So I must paint the whole thing white I think. Can't do half a job. Right, with the aid of this little fella here. I'm going to start making a counter for the refreshments room. Now I've measured it up to about 13.5 mil, and I've measured what I need in the refreshments room to be about in total 60 millimeters in length from that edge to that edge. So it goes up against the back wall where the two windows are. So I've got the shape and to roll this card is not very easy because it's starting to crease like it has on the inside. But what I did was I just got a, you can do it with a pen or, or anything round and solid and just press it and that will take any creases out of the card if you want to fold it round. Like so. Right, so now that I've got my basic shape, I'm just using this old off cut of the one mil thick brick card to make the countertop. So I'm just going to overlap the countertop by about a millimeter and a half and then just mark it. Here and here. Right, so now I have my basic shape, I just need to cut it out. Right, and I have cut the shape out um, to fit onto the, the paneling, the wood paneling, but um, I've made a little mistake. I seem to have the brick side facing up. Um, yeah, it'll make a lovely top, but uh, <laughs> luckily for me it's going to be painted anyway. So I shall glue that onto there now. Right, and there's the counter with its brick top. <laughs> um, I've also cut out a shelf to go underneath as well, because I might as well use the radius, because it's already cut to shape, and then that'll just fit in there. So we'd have a shelf underneath there as well. So as you can see, I'm still adding more detail to the counter now that the uh, 
shelving's dried. I've put a piece of card around the base there to act as a plint and I've started to put uprights in along the along the um, side there just to give it some character. This section here is where you would um, open it up to go through. That's why I've left them narrow. I will score that so that we, you will actually see a line there to indicate that that would be lifted up. So I shall continue a bit more adding some more of these little uprights. counter is finished. I'm not going to do any more with that now. I think that, that's more than enough. Um, what I'm going to do now is concentrate on a little um, counter stroke sink that goes at the back of here. So it's going to be the same width again, so I've cut a piece of card the same width. And what I'll do is I'll cut out um, a, a sink hole as it were, so I'll put a little sink in the corner, which I'll put in the middle. No, I'll put it in the middle. And I'll make it the same height as the counter. And what I'll do is when I cut that out, I'll stick another card, a piece of card underneath. So it looks like we've got some depth. So let's just to see how we get on with this. What I'm doing now is actually cutting out <laughs> a sink. Um, So once this is cut out, I'll stick it to that piece of card and that will give me a depth. And then once that's painted, it will probably look like a sink, or it'll look like a balls up, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, it's such a tiny piece of card to cut out. But is it worth it? Well. We'll find out in a minute. So as you can see I have cut out that tiny piece of card and stuck it onto the bottom. So which now gives it a little bit of depth uh, when it's painted. I have finished with the sink. Uh, I've only put on one tap. And as you can see it's really really tiny. That little tiny piece of card there I couldn't even pick it up. How to use a toothpick in the end with a tiny touch of glue on it and hoping it would stick to the piece of card I've already cut. So that's that finished. Right, time to move on. Right, as you can see I've added a little baby burko there for the hot water for the teas. As you see, I'm just going across the floor very lightly with a pen. Roughly about six millimeters apart. Just trying to keep them equally spaced. The idea is, is just to create some tiles on the floor. Um, I won't be painting any of these in, um, it'll just be a white marble tiled floor. Like so, and uh, what I'll do now is I'll let that dry and then before I go the other way, because if I start drawing the lines the other way, chances are I'll end up smudging it. So, in the meantime, while waiting for the ink to dry I'm just going to paint these a subtle brown. All I've done is I've mixed some Humbrol Matte 70 with a little bit of Humbrol Matte 99. The 99 is a yellow and the 70 is a brown. So what it does it gives it a really rich darker brown. As you can see Right, so now the floor's done, I have now stuck on the the sink and the counter now. And it's it's looking pretty good. So I've just got to varnish the top, which I'm going to use a, um, a Humbrol varnish. 
and I've just got to paint the sink top and the stainless top all in silver and the baby burko I'll paint that as well and as you can see I'm just painting up the sink now and it's very delicate I've got to be careful I don't knock that tap Right, with the sink now painted and the boiler painted, I've just painted a little blue dot on there so you know that's a cold tap. Right, one final detail. Um, I'm just going to add some gloss, a drop of gloss into the sink if I can do it without dropping it on the floor or or anyway, I'm just trying to pick up a blob at the moment on my brush and it's just not working. Alright, I've got a little bit on there. Alright, if I let dry the brush off a little bit, I can go in and move the gloss around. It looks like we've got water in the sink. actually hope the sink don't leak right there you go I don't know if you can see it on the camera but it's just so tiny there you go there's water in the sink Planning plan for making the chairs, and uh, they're going to be the booth type, like you see in the 1950s cafes. And I've had a go, and I've made a few already. So I'm just going to show you how I did it. Right, first of all, the first measurement on the drawing. You need to start from the back. So you need to start from this back face here, so you want 17mm to start with. So just mark the card, it's 17mm. And then if you use a square, it's dead easy to fold the card the way you want to fold. So I'm putting my mark bang on the line, on this top edge here and then just pushing it over. Once I've got it over, you've got the fold. And then, as you can see, I've got a little bit of a headrest on the edge. So what you do then, you get your screwdriver, put that in between the fold, making sure you don't lose any of the height, so you, if, you, if you need to, you can twist it back a little bit. And then just roll it, and just press against the screwdriver forming the edge and then pull the screwdriver out and that should leave you with the headrest then you mark down from the top 11mm and this will then form the seat same again the mark up against the top of the, the square there making sure you square this way and this way to the square and then just fold it over like so and then to make sure you got a good fold just fold it right over and press it home nice and tight right now you've got the seat shape you need to mark your 5.5 millimeters from the seat outwards. So you just mark your 5.5, and then this side of the square again, putting the mark to the top edge, and then just push it over.
and then do the fold properly afterwards. And check your measurement, make sure you've got 5.5 because this bit is crucial for the next bend. Now you've got your bend, you close it and then use your fingernail to find the edge of the bend that you've just done. Or you could use the back edge of a Stanley knife to find it and just fold that nice and tight. And then you end up with your seat like so. And then by pushing them together you get the rule and for the final measurement to cut it off is three and a half millimeters. This time we just mark the line with a pair of scissors, just cut it off. And then that's ready to be glued. Just make just a final check, make sure your folds are where they should be. Right, and just glue it on. Now these will have to be trimmed later when I put the sides on. There you go. The first seat is a double seat so it's back to back. And you can get two figures sitting in there. So these would be ideal if you're making a um, drive-in or anything. Still got to be painted yet. And what I did was for the sides is I have a little drawing here of the actual sides of 16mm across, 17mm high, which matches the side height of the actual seat. Then I've come up 5mm and then cut across with 4 mil um, equal spacings on the center. Right, here we are. We're just gluing up the last um, single seater. Um, they do remind me of church pews or those um, seats you see in the 1950s. Diners, <clears throat> excuse me. With the single seaters, I'm just putting a little bit of card on the back. Just to just make sure it sits. Yep. Just to make sure that uh, just to hide that little infill there. So I'm just putting a little bit of card in there, just to tidy the back up. Just flush with the back, that's it. Just make it tidy. Right. That's it. Right, as you can see, I've painted the seats red. And I'm in the process of making some tables to go with them. Uh, they're quite basic. Um, I've just cut two bits of card and I've cut... Um, some round edges on on them just to give them that uh, look so I'm just putting the plinths on the bottom of the tables now to finish them off
hopefully they should stand by themselves. There you go, that's the first table done. Moving away from the tables and chairs, I've decided to put something else into the refreshment room. And here is the kit for it. You're thinking to yourself, what on earth are you going to build now? Well, I'm going to make that. That used to be my old jukebox, a 1955. Seaberg Automatic um, 200 play uh, You all know Ben, that's my dog there, he's just sitting there gazing up at it Yep, so I'm gonna have a go at building that Right, so here we go. Hopefully it should all just go together um, Starting with the base and the back Just let them rest for a little bit while the glue goes off. So you're probably wondering where on earth did I get all my dimensions from? Well, I remember most of the dimensions for when I send it away for repairs. Um, because I had to measure up for the courier. See quite a little fiddly thing. This get it to stay together. Right, so I've got the first side on. So I'll see if I can get the other side on. Um, yes, uh, I sent it away for repair um, because it was such an old jukebox. The the mechanism, the computer of its dear, was just uh, worn out, and um, the only way they they could fix it was to get another one. So that's the two sides on. Right, so that's the two sides done. I'm just going to put the front grill in there now. I'm just going to glue that in with the uh, three fins. I'll put a bit, bit more glue on that. It's a bit runny in this glue. Let's just get a little bit on the sides. Yeah, I had this Jew Fox all for years and years, but in the end, they just could not repair it. Not without stripping down another jukebox because you couldn't get the parts from. So now I have a Galaxy 200 S and an SM Galaxy 200. Trying to get these little bits of card in place. Right, so that's the grill on. So the next bit is to put this piece on, which goes from front to back. Hopefully it'll square it all up. I've just got to trim a bit off. It's a little bit on the wide side. So all I'm doing is just taking a really fine chamfer off that edge. Hardly taking anything off. Oh, 
hopefully it'll fit in there now. in there, just got to trim it to length. As you see it's starting to take shape. So uh, I just gotta do the selections wheel for the top there and put some records in with the motor then put the glass lid on. Right, so what I'm doing now, I'm just putting the rotary selector in now. Which uh, used to spin around when selecting your records. Just get that in place. It just sits behind the glass, that does. That looks about right. Right, so that's that bit done. So what I'll do now is I'll put a little bit of two mil square card in in the back there, and then I can sit my records on. Put in my rolled up paper. But in the middle of the paper is a toothpick, just to make sure it doesn't squash when I put it in. So I'm just going to push that in there, and then that's me records. There you go. So I think the next thing to do is put a little bit of a top on it and then put the glaze in. Oh, I've got to put some sort of mechanism in there to look as though the records are going to be played. Right, there it is in the raw before I paint it. Um, I can take the top off because I need to paint the records and the motor in the back board before I uh, can put the top on and the glass. So it looks to be about the right height. He's just uh, seeing if he's got any change to put in there. <laughs> right, next time you see this, it'll be finished. Right, and as you can see, the management of South Shields train station has decided to splash out on the refreshments room with all brand new booth, table, and a jukebox. Right, I think that's all the detail I'm going to do with that. Um, I could go on forever, I think. Um, none of it's stuck down. I'm still waiting for a few sitting down figures and somebody to run the calf. Um, once they turn up, then I can unglue that in situ into the room. Right, now we've put the building back onto the platform. Um, there's only two more buildings to do on this side. Um, there's this one here. I've just got to put a wall in here and put two windows in like we have there. And then the little goods office that comes out here. So the first thing I want to do is to make a wall to go from there to there. And tie it in with these two but not touch it to the main entrance just yet. Yep, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to concentrate on doing this little building here. Um, I'm not going to put any detail into this building um, whatsoever. Um, although there's an opening there cut for a door, well the door will be on that side. Um, yeah, I might just paint this out, but no more than that. Now the goods building um, that is going to hide all the cables for the whole of the main entrance building um, 
so I'm going to put a terminal block inside there with a removable lid so we can wire up all the LEDs and whatever for the building so that is the plan I hope there's a policeman there Oh my god, look at the queue! No wonder he's in a hurry. The queue must be for the barbers. Of it is. Oh well, at least they're keeping them um, social distancing. Right, now that the windows have been fitted to the wall that goes here and we've got the other wall coming towards me uh, the trunking's now done as well I can physically now put this section together um, so I'm quite happy with what I've got the end wall. As you can see we're back on the baseboard now. Just make sure that that's home. I can wipe the glue off in a minute so. So I'm still not connecting this to the rest of the station. So all I've got to do now is make some strengtheners to tie these walls in. Right, now that that building is attached to uh, the refreshments room, this is where it gets uh, interesting because there's a chimney going in here and there's a chimney going in here. But I can't attach this chimney because I want to leave this section of the building loose as long as I can before I put the chimney in here. Um, so I think just for now I shall concentrate on doing all the window sills, putting the plinths in, the top brick faces in, all, all these uh, little bits and pieces and weather it up. Get this to a finished state as far as I can go and then do the same with the middle one and then with the end building over there. Um, because as you know it's over a meter long this building and trying to manhandle it doing little things like weathering faces uh, little jobs like that, there's a good chance I could damage it and knock it. Um, so I'm going to have to do it in sections. Right, as you can see, we have 
the refreshment room done complete with a thumping jukebox so it's nice to uh, see it like this because um, when it goes into the refreshment room it will be very very limited as you can see we've got a blue green and wheat bulb um, flashing on and off inside there and it really does look like it's um, thumping away I wonder what's on the turntable no, I quite can't hear it but uh, so we have a working jukebox in the refreshment room so the next job now is to get this into the room without um, losing any of the people or tables coming loose. I mean it's all been super glued down um, so hopefully it will stay um, together. As you can see we've got Mrs Philpot there who's um, asking the customer what she wants to drink and all the others are just having fun. Right, just before we go we'll just have a quick look at the LEDs I've actually added to the rooms now. Uh, as you can see I've put one in the barbers. Uh, hopefully a little bit of light will come down through into the telecommunications room and as you can see as we come round into the refreshments room I have also added a light here as well so when the roof's on I think that'll look quite good in there right I think that's all from me now and uh, I'll see you again next time Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye.